So, hello everyone and thank you for coming today. This is Magento 2 Performance Best Practices. I'm Miguel Valparda and I work for Nexus. For the last five years, I worked in more than 25 countries as a senior developer for some of the biggest Magento projects. Since joining Nexus last year, I've held maintained Super Team, one of the most used modules to integrate Varnish and Magento 1. Early this year, I was nominated as a Magento Master in the Make category for my contributions and for actively engaging with other members of the community. I'm also a Magento Certified Solution Specialist and the sysadmin in my free time. Last year, I had the chance to present during several key events, like Mint Magento Vietnam, Mint Magento Brazil, and Mint Magento Argentina about open source software and e-commerce. Also last year, I gave a talk about working and traveling around the globe during the last developer bar camp. Most of you already know Nexus, one of the most renowned Magento hosting partners. With over eight years of experience, more than 40,000 sites, and roughly half of all enterprise edition installations, I think we have learned a thing or two about e-commerce. Today, I'm here to demonstrate the scalability of Magento 2 and how to boost your site performance with some simple changes. More sales doesn't need to mean more resources. All system level configuration files will be online shortly to show the exact settings and configuration application variables we use to run our tests. We will also provide all benchmarking software configurations so any curious parties can reproduce our tests as desired. Now, enough with the sales talk. It's time to the tech part of the talk. To demonstrate the best practices, we did three pairs of software configurations. First, we tested a vanilla Magento 2 using PHP 5.6 versus the same software using PHP 5.6 and Varnish. Then, we did the same with PHP 7. And finally, we compared the vanilla Magento 2 using PHP 5.6 versus the vanilla Magento 2 using PHP 7. Now, to start, I will show you the hardware we use. This is server anyone can go get right now. This is not a super server we set up for like these tests. This is the bare metal, but underneath the hood, we did several customizations to improve the software we use to serve the content. To increase the read and write performance, we mounted frequently accessed file systems with a NOAA time attribute, and that includes home, bar, and temp. We also use PHP FPM, an alternative high performance method to run PHP based applications. We also have Keep, keep Alive enabled and GZIP output compression enabled by default. From a database perspective, we use Percona server with extra DBs on all Magento plans. Most of the Percona configuration variables were specifically tweaked for Magento. From a security perspective, we disable all unnecessary system services. Trust me when I say all these servers have been specifically tweaked for Magento in every possible way. We try to keep everything up to date and that's why we run nightly jam updates. And that includes the software we use to serve the content and the system kernel. Now, to the software. There you go. Some of these versions are outdated now, but at the time we did the tests, these were the latest versions. And that includes, well, Magento 2.0.2 and PHP 7.0.2. Since every store is different and data affects performance, this is the sample configuration data we use for all our tests. Now, we also apply the following standard practice, the following standard configurations, all of which conform the Magento 2 best practices. Most of the code snippets you will see today were taken from devdocs.magento.com, the best place to get the official documentation. As you can see, this is how we configure Redis. This is quite simple and pretty self-explanatory, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask them those at the end of the talk. Then, this is what we use for memcache. That's pretty simple too. As you can see, there are two types of PHP extensions and both are supported. And finally, we enable production mode by running the following command. Production mode has a better performance because the static files are populated into the pub slash static directory and unlikely developer mode, it compiles code. Developer mode will also be unsuitable for these tests because it's intended to be used only for development and not for sites who are actually handling traffic or taking orders. Now, second please. To keep our setup relatively simple, we, use, we installed Varnish, Redis, and Memcache servers in the same physical server we were using as a web server. While installing these virtual servers someplace else can increase your performance, 
using it like this can keep our setup relatively simple. Now, benchmarking data without context has little value. And that is why I want you to understand what are we testing and how are we testing it. To do the actual testing, we use Siege. While we know Siege is not an absolute performance measurement tool, we believe it remains useful to see the results of any recent changes, and that includes code changes or server configuration changes. Siege is an open source HTTP-based benchmarking utility that can stress test a web address or a list of web addresses with different levels of concurrency. Of course, Siege is not going to tell us how many people can be on your site at once, but then we still believe it's super useful to see the results of any recent changes and how it impacted the performance, for better or worse. With the help of Ashley's Router blog post, we created the following script we used to automate the entire process. We used this script to run five tests at one minute intervals. As you can see, first we create the sitemap with the help of Ashley's Router blog post again. Then we warm the cache with 50 concurrent users for 60 seconds. And then after a minute, we started our own tests. We, use, we ran three tests for PHP 5.6 and three tests for PHP 7. We did 50, 100, and 300 concurrent users for a minute, both, for, both with and without varnish. More than a half a million transactions were made during these tests. Again, in this context, transactions mean server hits, and that's really important because while Siege is not an a software you should use for like absolute benchmark benchmarking, we are testing servers here and not how many people can be on your side. We will use the results of the test, of the PHP 5.6 test as the baseline. And we will compare all the other results against this one. Before showing you the actual results, I will try to, I will try to explain you the different SIG results. As you can see, this is a sample output you get after running Siege, where the transactions are the number of server hits. The availability is the percentage of socket connections successfully handled by the server. The elapsed time is the duration of the entire SIG test. The data transfer shows the sum of data transferred to every SIG simulated user. The response time shows the average time it took to respond to each simulated user request. The transaction rate is transactions divided by elapsed time. Throughput shows the average number of bytes transferred every second. Concurrency indicates the average number of simultaneous connections and well, both successfully and failed transactions are pretty self-explanatory. And also, well, longest and shortened transactions show the amount of time of the longest and shortened transactions. The full set of results are already available on GitHub. You can go search that right now. But for now, I will focus on a subset of information showing us the transaction rate, number of transactions, and server response time. Now. From here to almost the end of the talk, this will be only numbers on charts, so bear with me for a second. The first test compares Magento to performance using PHP 5.6, both with and without varnish. For PHP without varnish, the transaction rate was almost 50 transactions a second for 50 concurrent users, almost 70 for 100, and the same number for 300 users. Then, this is the total transactions handled by the server and the response time in second. As you can see, the performance deteriorated when 300 concurrent users were hitting the server, spiking response times to almost four seconds. If we only used the first two graphs, we would have missed this conclusion because the transaction rate and the transaction handle were normal and the results within 100 and 300 concurrent users were quite similar. Now I'll move to the same test with Varnish. While we are almost certain the performance will be increased and the server load decreased, the charts will show us the details. One thing to keep in mind through this test with Varnish, Magento singles out Varnish as their preferred cache solution. From the backend, there are only two options, files, which is not intended to be used in production, and Varnish, which is the preferred caching solution. This is how the transactions per second look like while using Varnish. And this is how it compares to the same test without Varnish. With 300 concurrent users, the transaction rate was about eight times higher with Varnish from almost 70 connections to 580 connections. 
With 100 concurrent users, the transaction rate was nearly 2.3 times higher, and with 50 concurrent users, the transaction rate almost doubled with Varnish. These results pretty much speak from themselves, showing us how Varnish drastically increased the transaction rate of a server running PHP 5.6. Now I'll move to total transactions. With 300 concurrent users, transactions handled were almost nine times with Varnish. With 100 concurrent users, transactions handled were likewise five times with Varnish. And with 50 concurrent users, the transactions handled were almost doubled. With Varnish, this server was able to handle nine times the transactions versus a server running PHP 5.6 without it, handling 300 concurrent users without any performance decrease. Now I will confirm this with the response time chart. As indicated by the very flat red line, the response time was always the same when the cache was warm, 0.01 seconds, or a tenth of a second. With 300 concurrent users, the response time was 377 times faster, and that's quite a lot. With 100 concurrent users, the response time was almost 90 times higher, and with 50 concurrent users, the time is 50% higher with Varnish. It's important to understand that these results show that Varnish is responding to most of the requests. This test, <laughs> a, three time, a three, 377 times faster load time won't probably be the result, but these tests speak from themselves. As you can see, the performance far outpaced PHP 5.6 without Varnish. Now, with all this said, I'll move to the world's best and most acclaimed language, PHP 7. This is the transaction rate. And this is how it compares with PHP 7 with Varnish. With 300 concurrent users, the transaction rate was almost five times higher with Varnish. With 100 concurrent users, the transaction rate was almost two times higher with Varnish. And then with 50 concurrent users, the transaction rate was almost two times higher with Varnish. Now to the total transactions. With 300 concurrent users, the transactions handled were almost five times higher with Varnish. With 100 concurrent users, the transactions handled were almost 1.5 times higher. And then with 50 concurrent users, the transactions handled were almost the same, 1.5 times higher. And finally, the response time. With 300 concurrent users, the response time was almost 187 times faster with Varnish. With 100 concurrent users, 31 times, fa times faster. And with 50 concurrent users, the response time was 50 time, 53 times faster with Varnish. As you can see again, the very flat red line is the same, almost a tenth of a second. With all these numbers, you will be probably tired now, but I promise I'll save the best charts for the end of the talk. The remaining charts will show how PHP 7 compares with PHP 5.6. Now, this test is tricky. It's just like comparing Magento 1 running PHP 5.6 and Magento 2 using PHP 5, 7 and Varnish. But then, since it's the same platform, the test has the test have some relevance, if you ask me. I'll start again with the transaction rate. With 300 concurrent users, the transaction rate was almost double with PHP 7. With 100 concurrent users, the transaction rate nearly doubled with PHP 7. And with 50 concurrent users, the transaction rate was almost the same. Now, let's quickly move to the transactions handled. With 300 concurrent users, the transactions handled were 1.8 times higher with PHP 7. With 100 concurrent users, the transaction time was three times higher. And with 50 concurrent users, the response time was almost three times higher, as you can see in the charts. And finally, the response time. With 300 concurrent users, the response time was over two times faster with PHP 7. With 100 concurrent users, the response time was three times faster. And with 50 concurrent users, the response time was almost the same. Well, with all these results, while all these results are not as good as PHP 5.6 or PHP 7 running Varnish, this alone shows PHP 7 is twice as fast as PHP 5.6. Since most of the HTTP HTTPS pages and checkout pages are piped through Varnish, this, this metric is critical. For those of you wondering about the term pipe, 
It refers to whenever Apache serves the content directly instead of varnish. This occurs whenever pages are served directly from the web server rather than the cache, such as checkout pages, show on an order, or a customer account. In this, in this case, PHP 7 rather than varnish is the real hero, which is why we recommend it over PHP 5.6. This is an improved varnish alone won't give, and that is one of the things why we recommend using PHP 7. Now, we are getting close to the end of the talk, and that is why I want to conclude. From this data, it appears that Varnish plus PHP 7 is definitely the way to go. This is something all hosting companies should be offering as the baseline for Magento 2. It is also important to know how easy it is to configure Varnish for Magento, and this part is super important. You don't have to deal with this Varnish module any longer, like Tupertin or stuff like that. Now you can simply flip the switch in the admin panel, download the generated BCL, and apply it. It doesn't get much easier, and that is why I think most of you, or probably all of you, should be using Varnish for, as the preferred solution for full page cache. Now, this is the end of the talk. Thank you all for coming today. You can find me among the boots to talk, willing to talk to anyone. If you liked the talk, you can always invite me a beer, and if you didn't, okay, I'll invite one to you. It's not that hard. This was Magento 2 performance best practices. 